guys, welcome back to my channel and another homeschooling video. A little while ago, I did my favorite high school homeschool curriculum video and I shared this curriculum in that video and a lot of you guys asked to see a dedicated video about it and kind of a closer look and a little bit more information about it. So that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the Critical Thinking Company's US History Detective book one and there's also a book two. They do have an ancient history curriculum that's only one volume, but if you get the US history, you're gonna need both volumes if you wanna get a very broad scope of the United States history. So I found this curriculum just because my oldest daughter was finishing up her sophomore year in high school and she needed a US history curriculum. However, she is also sort of running out of time in high school and she's doing a lot of college classes as part of dual credit, which is also something that I have done videos about where she's taking college classes in high school that count for high school and for college. So um, if you have any more questions about that, I do have a video about that that I will link in my homeschooling playlist below. But anyway, because she is doing so much college work and everything, um, I needed a curriculum for her that is very, uh, survey based you know a survey course is a course that you know doesn't really get into too much nitty-gritty for lack of a better term um, with different topics and that's exactly what I would say this curriculum is more of a survey course you're hitting the high points of course you're hitting everything chronologically but you're not stopping and spending a whole lot of time with each individual topic or person. That's exactly what I wanted. And I have loved things from the Critical Thinking Company. They have a variety of curriculum, not just history. They have logic and all different types of things. So we've used quite a few things from them over the years and everything we've used from them, I really, really enjoyed. But there are two books in this series. They are, they are supposed to be recommended for grades eight through 12. So if you have a child who has a very, what I would say a strong reading comprehension level, uh, you could definitely start it as early as eighth grade. Um, but I, I wouldn't start it any sooner than that because even though the lessons are short, there's still a lot of information and I think it would be probably too much for a younger kid. But it is designed for eighth through 12th grades. Book one covers the colonial era through reconstruction and book two covers the late 1800s to the 21st century, uh, 2016 to be exact. Nine sections in each book. Each, each section starts with a timeline for that section, um, which is really helpful, and an introduction. So in this case, the colonial era, so they're introducing the colonial era. There's a map of what the country looked like at that point and a timeline. So there are full color maps in throughout the book. There's a mix of color and black and white pictures and different types of images. So I like how they mix all that. It's not a, just a plain, all black and white book. Said so this is lesson one, section one, lesson one, the colonial era. So you do have the introduction, you have a map, you have your timeline. And then there is a brief reading section with each lesson, like I said, that I would consider to be survey style, meaning you're not gonna get too in depth with each topic, but that leaves room for unit studies, extra nonfiction, historical fiction, documentaries and there are so many things that you can do you can pick and choose if you want your child to just pick out certain events certain people you can make this as comprehensive and meaty as you want to but you can also leave it the way it is like we're doing and make it um, brief but still giving you a vast look at u.s history without being too time consuming and without being too overwhelming so typical example you have your introduction you have one two pages of reading and then you have questions here um that you have questions here and then you always have a written response at the end of each lesson. So you're not only doing uh, multiple choice and filling in blanks, but you're also writing a little bit in each lesson, which I appreciate because I think it's really important to mix writing skills and essay based things in as much as you can, especially if you have a child who could use some extra writing practice for high school. Um, or maybe even college prep, you know, these are essentially little baby mini essays that they're doing every single lesson, which I really appreciate. So one thing that also makes this curriculum unique and why it's called U.S. History Detective is because when they're answering these questions in, the, in this section, they're not only answering the question, they have to tell you what sentence or sentences they found the answer in. And if you look at the reading more closely, every single sentence is numbered so let's say the answer to this question says, which sentences best support the answer? Let's say, you know, sentences 12 and 13 answer that question. So your child is gonna 
not only answer the question, but write what sentence it came from. And that really helps because, you know, it's kind of like when you were in school and they said you could take an open book test. They have all the information right here. There's no reason not to get the information right anyway, but especially if they have to go back and maybe reread that section or reread a sentence, they are spending more time in the reading than they would be if they just kind of skimmed over it and didn't have to say specifically where they found it. So I particularly like that. I think that makes it really helpful and really unique. Each section also has a review at the end. So if you want to grade their daily work and make that part of their grade, or if you only want to grade um, the reviews, there are reviews at the end and there is an answer key provided. I know that sounds kind of obvious that it would have an answer key, but I have used curriculum, not for very long, but we have used curriculum that did not come with an answer key. And to me, that's crazy because I'm not gonna, I don't know everything about US history and I don't even know what sometimes she's reading about every single day, but I certainly don't have time to figure it out before I grade her work. So I love that there is an answer key provided. That's really, really helpful. So that is basically how the curriculum works, whether you're using book one or book two, that is how it's set up. And that's the thing I love about this curriculum is like I said, since the reading is so brief, she does history every single day. It's not a subject that I feel like we have to alternate. There's no reason why she can't read two or three pages and answer some questions and you know do a paragraph or two at the end every single day. Even with her college work, I think that's still very, very doable and um, then she does. I mean, that's that's really a nice thing about it. You don't have to do that, obviously, and especially if you're going to be adding things to this curriculum, um, like unit studies that are more in depth, or you know, nonfiction reading or documentaries or whatever. Obviously, you can spend as much time in a lesson as you want. But with the reading lessons being so short, I really feel like that it's not too much to ask uh, to them for them to do history every single day. Okay, so looking at the table of contents, section one is the colonial era, section two, revolutionary era. Section three, the federal introduction, the federal era. Section four, nationalism era. Section five, the reform era. Section six is the expansion era. Section seven is the sectional conflicts era. Section eight is the civil war. And section nine is reconstruction. In book two, obviously you're picking up where book one left off. So you're starting with the Gilded Age, imperialism and progressives. The Great War, The Roaring Twenties, The Great Depression, World War II, the 1950s, the 1960s, the 70s through 2016, and that is what book two covers. So we are really enjoying this. I think, like I said, it, it wasn't in my top high school curriculum picks video for nothing. I definitely love this. I hope that it's something that my youngest daughter will be able to use because even if she starts it younger than high school, which we very well may do, um, I definitely feel like it's a great curriculum and it's very affordable. And I wanted to show you guys kind of a more in-depth look of it because you were interested. And I personally, you never hear anybody talking about this. I've never heard anybody talking about this. I don't even know how I stumbled upon it, but I did. And I'm glad that I did. And so if you guys have any questions about it, definitely leave them in the comments and I'll answer them the best that I can. I will also link, uh, I got mine off Amazon. I think you may be able to get it a few other places, but I will link them on Amazon. I will also link my homeschooling playlist. You'll find that original video that kind of prompted this one, as well as the one about dual credit and tons of other homeschooling videos in that playlist. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And if you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.